All right. Uh, this is good. I, I don't know if people can hear me uh, or can see me. So my name is Lighton. Uh, we, uh, there's nine of us in here, and I know if, if we subtract uh, Pierre and myself, that would be that would be that would be. So, do you mind if we give, mind it if give it a little bit of time? Maybe time. Maybe we we'll give the others we'll give the others seventeen zero five. Then we'll start. Then we'll start. Is is that fine? Is that fine? I think it's yeah, fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Mm. Oh. Uh, so, uh, so I don't know if you use this video conferencing uh, uh, software, software, but it's always a good idea, idea to, to, if you're not speaking, you're not speaking you mute your you microphone, mute microphone and, and you want to say something, you unmute it and then. then. So, if so you notice there's a lot of echo because there are people with uh, uh, microphones switched in right now. So, Wedsong, a very diligent person, has the microphone on, as well as the microphone on, as well as the just mute them. Just mute them now. Now, if included, if it. included, I think. Okay. Yeah. Much better, I think. Uh, no more echo. All right. Uh, maybe as we wait for the others, is it? Um, I'm curious. Uh, maybe you can tell us where you are dialing in from. I know I'm in Lusaka right now. The the COVID nineteen hotspot, right? I don't know where people are from. Maybe we can start start with that as we wait for the others or something. Hello? Oh, yes. Hi. Just tell us where you're dating in from. Uh, she like okay, um, um, I'm, I'm actually in, in Kafir. I came to do something very urgent. So I'm actually, I've packed somewhere. I had to turn on my laptop so that I could attend this class. I could literally say I'm on the road. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. The power of technology, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> which is a good thing. But, but where are you based? In Lusaka. Okay. Oh, also, uh, colleagues, so we are recording this session. Normally, it's usually the case that when we have these uh, sort of interactions, some people might not be able to make it. And so we we are recording this and then we'll share it so that those that won't be able to to attend this session will be able to play it back and hopefully be able to make sense out of what we're going to discuss. Okay. Uh, how about the others? Where are we dialing in from? Where are you right now? Uh, are you safe? I hope you are safe. But you're safe. Hello? Hello? Yes, miss, we can yes, hear you. We can hear you. Um, um, uh, dialing uh, in. Dialing in. in. Right. From Undola. 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 Okay. Okay. Okay, hello? Yes, hi. Yes, hi. Yes, this is a uh, gift band uh, dialing in from Fue, Eastern Province. Mm, okay. well, now, last time I read the keyboard, the keyboard we were uh, are, are you safe? Are you safe we are very safe, no cases so far. Just a lion okay. queued uh, Great Hope Pupil. We just have a problem with animals. Okay, but no COVID 19 so far. Good. Yes. Okay, okay. See. Great. Great. Uh, uh, full, yeah. I hope you're not uh, uh, surviving on illegal game meat here. Otherwise, before we know it, you'll be nabbed or something. How about you? No, we have. Hello? Well, uh, the others don't want to tell us where they're based, is it? Shall we start then? This is 1705. Uh, those of you that haven't told us where you're dialing in from, maybe you can use the chat feature. So I'm typing right now. Uh, use 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 the chat feature. Let us know where you're dialing. Uh, hope that should help. Okay, so again, like I said, uh, the, the way this is going to happen here, this is supposed to be an information session. Um, it's going to be brief, right? We, so Pierre and myself, um, we are hoping we'll introduce ourselves um, and, and hopefully try and, 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 and 
explain a bit more about how the course is going to run. And I guess we should start with an apology. There's a bit of a mix up. So this course was just handed over to Kiel and myself uh, recently from our other colleague, who sadly is not going to be a part of the course, which is really unfortunate because he's been teaching this course for quite some time now. But uh, that's besides the point. Um, and, and so we thought it best to just have this interaction so that we set some ground rules and to try and explain exactly what's going to happen when um, when certain key activities are going to take place and hopefully try and answer potential questions that you guys might might have for us, so Pierre and myself. Um, right, so we've, we've kind of prepared something with Pierre, right? Uh, Oh, my name is Lighton, by the way. Um, so, Pierre, maybe you can share your screen now so that we start the presentation. So the thing is, we have a, a short presentation. Uh, Pierre is just going to start off with um, a part we're calling Administrivia, where he's going to just give us a rundown of how the assessment is going to be done in the course, um, some key activities that we're going to incorporate into the course itself. Uh, and, and I guess now would be a good time for us to say, we don't know what's going to happen to residential school, right? We are still waiting for IDE to tell us exactly how that's going to be handled. Hopefully, by the time we are supposed to come for residential school, this whole COVID-19 thing would have died down. We don't know. But if not, then there'll probably be a backup plan or something. But um, I, I think that's uh, IDE's responsibility, so we'll just have to wait. Uh, for now, though, we're just going to quickly walk you through um, our short presentation. I don't know if Pierre is online here. Yes, I'm online, yeah. I'm here. Good afternoon. Okay. Um, so as, as Pierre is walking you through the, 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 the first part of the presentation, I'll occasionally just come in to maybe try and add one or two things that you will probably miss out or something. Um, but also the slides will be shared, of course. Um, and just to mention here, though, I was probably, we we're probably going to send out now, but the course syllabus will be on Astri as well. So be on the lookout as soon as you receive mail to say the course syllabus has been up uploaded. You probably want to download it so that you, you try and synthesize it. It might have a little bit of additional detail uh, from what's going to be discussed in here, but, 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 but essentially the information you find in there is, is more or less the same stuff that's going to be in the presentation slides. So both the presentation slides and the course syllabus will be shared. I think Piero was disconnected and he's back now. Yes, so, sorry, there was an issue when it came to presenting the screen, but uh, let me try and uh, give it a, another okay. go. Uh, and, and also, uh, so in terms of if, if there's a part of the, uh, the presentation that you need clarification on, uh, we don't have to wait until the end. Um, what you should do is just uh, unmute your microphone and just uh, feel free to interrupt either Pierre or myself, and then we'll try and address your concern or your question. Okay, just uh, let me know if you can see the screen, the screen now. Well, I can see it. I don't know about uh, about the others here, but I can see it. I can also see it. Thank you. For okay, continuing. thank you. Right, so once again, good afternoon. So my name is Pierre Lambewe, and my colleague is Lighton Pri, you've been speaking to. All right, so this is going to be your list 3010 application of ICTs and information management. So our first session here, we're mostly just going to indicate some information about how the course is going to be delivered and uh, things like the, the course outline and the course content. We'll just go into that Okay, so as we've mentioned, the course is listed 10, Application of ICTs and Information Management. 
All right, so this here, it's just a look into where you are currently. There's the first year, second year, and third year courses, and the fourth year courses. Okay, if we have a look here, yes, so you'll see these are currently the third year courses. We're not going to go into too much detail about this right now. We're strictly going to be referring to list 3010 for now. All right, although you might also want to note that in addition to the core courses, the major courses, you will have to take some minors. Okay, if you have any queries about that, you can ask us. Okay. All right, so first we're going to look at the course activities. All right, so we will have an offline screencast session. All right, so basically there will be screencasts, more or less recording, recorded videos, which you can access at any time. They will be put online. We will get into more details about accessing the material online shortly. All right, and then there will be a residential school. Unfortunately, the time period and the time frame for that we will announce soon, all right? We cannot do it at the current moment because there's been um, some changes that have occurred in this current academic year. But once the information is available, we will indicate how the residential school will be handled. All right, and then we will have a live question and answer session, all right? There'll be one session every two weeks, that's bi-weekly. So after two weeks, there'll be a question and answer session in case you had questions on some of the content that was covered within that two weeks, all right? And then we are going to look at the assessment just now how it's going to be de delivered. All right, as a quick overview, there will be assignments, there'll be uh, uh, one major test and then your final exam. Okay, if I so if I can just come in, Piela, just uh, just a quick note on the yes, previous yes. slide. Uh, so this this idea behind um, screencast really is that uh, aside from the uh, so-called modules that you probably already have access to, although those things are dated, we we're in the process of making changes, and and Piela will speak um, more about that shortly. But aside from the modules, the the idea or the plan is to also share more or less like um, lecture slides and companion screencast for practical-oriented uh, portions of the module. Uh, so it should be something like uh, a recording of Piela uh, presenting some aspect or showcasing some practical aspect of, of, of the particular module. This will be shared together with the slides to help you synthesize and understand the material really. Um, right now, the plan is to, to only have these for the practical aspects of the course uh, so I think it's beginning module number three where we start looking at uh, conceptual design of database management systems, for instance. So uh, things that perhaps you've already come across, the so-called uh, interrelationship diagrams. Um, so it's things like those. And then once we get to the part where we start looking at um, uh, our case study relation database management system, which is uh, MySQL, for instance, will be a, a, lot of, a lot of screencasts there. And also the, the so-called web design or website design aspect of the course as well. Right. So they'll be like recording something similar to, to this, although it will be offline. So we record the sessions, short little sessions or segments, sometimes longer, and then we share them uh, so that you use them alongside the lecture slides and the modules. Okay. All right. And now we're briefly going to look at prescribed and recommended textbooks. All right. So there will be more information on this on online, which we are again going to get to in a moment, All right? So you have your library automation and networking, right? You have your database development and management, right? You have database processing, fundamentals, design and implementation, right? And then beginning HTML with CSS and XHTML, modern guide and referencing. So once again, this information, it will be online. So you'll be able to read it in your own time, All right? Okay. Well, briefly going to look at the course resources. So firstly, Sorry, yeah, if I can just comment also on the, uh, the prescribed books. Now, these books, right, uh, these prescribed and recommended books are things that are in the official program document. But what you soon discover is that um, um, at the end of each lecture slide, right, uh, so in fact, at the end of this particular lecture slide, there'll be a section, a slide tagged as a bibliography where you have links to additional resources to complement that particular slide. And so in as much as we are, uh, 
we are explicitly, um, you know, like outlining these prescribed and recommended textbooks, uh, but there'll be additional or complementary resources that will be shared. And in fact, in most instances, we'll rarely use some of these materials because uh, for certain things, I think these are outdated. Pierre will probably agree with me. That, uh, last thing we'd want to do is to use a, um, a piece of text that was authored in 2007 for things like HTML because a lot has changed, right? So this is just there because it's in the program document, uh, but, but complementary links to resources that you can refer to will be provided at the end of all the slides provided to you. All right, so now we're just going to mention some of the software that we'll be using in the course, all right, in relation to the databases, all right, and the website creation. All right, so you have you have DIA, you have XAMPP, you have PHPMyAdmin, and Notepad++. All right, so as the course goes along, we will use these, these software, all right, at different points. Okay. <coughs> But uh, there is an important note that the software applications, they are just tools, all right? You are allowed to use alternative tools that you are comfortable with as we progress in the course. And in fact, in certain instances where, uh, so towards the end, what you notice is that we've petitioned these modules uh, amongst ourselves. So Piera is going to be responsible for a certain section of, of some of the modules and I'll be responsible for the others. But the thing is, you probably see me come in to kind of like cover some aspects of that particular module. And what you probably notice is that I may not use Notepad++ for instance, because I have a preference for a different type of tool. So the idea behind us saying that there are plenty of alternatives out there is simply to state that uh, you're not restricted to these tools here, right? Um, suffice to say that some of these tools that we're listing here uh, have a, um, a somewhat manageable learning curve, right? So you should be able to get started and be able to use them without a problem, right? Uh, but again, you're free to use whatever tool you feel comfortable using. Uh, and with time, you realize that actually you'll probably come across better alternatives to uh, what we're going to be using in class. Okay, and now one of the main course resources that we're going to be using, right, is you have a web platform called Astria, all right. I'm sure some of you, you're already familiar with it. Astria, this is where most, if not all, your lecture notes, your modules, or your assignments, they will be put on the Astria platform, all right. So even when you're, when you're receiving your assignment or submitting your assignment, right, you want to be using Astria. If you're accessing your lectures for notes or you're accessing your modules, it will be through Astria, all right? Okay, so the link, okay. I'm sure the link, it can be given to any of those who do not have it at this time. Yeah, and, and I just I just noticed that the, uh, I do apologize, I was on making it use that slide. So that slide is pointing to Moodle, in actual fact, it's supposed to be Astria. Uh, I'll make changes so that the, the version of slides that are going to be shared with you will have the correct link to the actual Astria site. Uh, so it won't be moved there. Sorry for that. All right. So as we've mentioned, your modules, they will be available on Astria. Right, your assignments, they'll also be on Astria. Right, and Astria, it has a discussions section, right? However, we will talk later on about the mailing list, all right? We will mostly be using the mailing list. All right, so your lecture notes will also be made publicly available, all right, on the course web page. So we have a link from each of your instructors. There's a link from Light and Perry, and there's also a link from myself, Pierre Lambert. Okay, so just, uh, if we can just have a brief look here, we can see there will be some information on Lighton's profile page, and there will also be some information available on my profile page. So just as an example, if let's say you cannot access certain lecture notes on Astria for any given reason, you may also be able to find those lecture notes on our personal 
profile pages or you can ask us all right so right, so, so they, they, they are the, so if the i mention something here, yes yes yeah. so so the the thinking behind this as well is that uh very soon um i do believe it's in module module number is that five module number five where we look at web design uh, the idea behind us setting up something like this is to use it as an example once we start looking at the web design aspect. Um, suffice to say that this is a very crude, right? It's just it's a static web web page, right? Course web page, nothing fancy here. Uh, it's nothing compared to uh, these, these other sophisticated websites that you probably come across. But but anyway, so like Pierre is saying, uh, things like lecture slides would pretty much be dumped here so that you have access to a public accessible platform. Um, so the other reasoning behind this is in the past, we've had terrible experience with uh, our other learning management system at Unza, which is uh, Moodle, right? Uh, sometimes it will be inaccessible. And so to avoid uh, the inconvenience um, that might be associated with the downtime, what we do is we provide this other public accessible space where you can download the notes from and still continue to access the materials. Um, and also, um, we use this to actually dump large files. So things like software tools that are going to be used in the course. We cannot upload those on Astria because Astria has a limitation uh, to the amount of space that can be occupied for a particular course. Um, so that's the reason behind this course web page. Okay, I just wanted to add in briefly though, if you wanted to access the notes from my profile page, Yes, it is publicly available, but not completely. So if you come to list 10, the link to this profile page, it will be given to you. It's, it's, it will be in your documents. But uh, if you do come to the list 10, then you have to, let's see if it loads. My connection is a bit slow, apologies. Okay, so apologies, my connection is a bit slow, but uh, yes, you will just have to enter in your your SIS user ID, so your computer number or your student ID, the ID that is associated to your SIS. If you enter it in, then you will be ha you have access to your lecture notes. All right, right now they're currently not yet there, but as they're put on Astria, they will also be put on the profile page. Okay, so we'll continue looking at our, our course resources. All right, so here we're just going to mention that um, I think uh, as Lighten already covered, there are some files like your video files which they, they cannot fit on Astria or at all. We may not be able to upload them to Astria. So such files, you may find them on our personal profile pages or in some cases we may use a YouTube all right, and as we've also mentioned, we will have, we'll have scheduled live question and answer sessions, which for now they will be bi-weekly, but as we progress, we'll see how things can be adjusted or improved upon, All right, And this, we have covered this, the large files, they will be on the instructor's profile pages. We will now look at the oh, course so, grading. Sorry, yes before Pierre looks at the course grading. So this idea of uh, the YouTube thing here is, uh, um, so this recording, for instance, is too large to, to dump onto our profile, right? So what we do is uh, we would, would normally upload it onto either my YouTube channel or Pierre's YouTube channel. And then um, on either one of the channels, you'll find a properly, a properly curated playlist associated with list 3010. Um, you don't, of course, have to subscribe to either one of our channels, but there'll be a link within Astria pointing to that particular video, right? So just to to let you know that in as much as you can access the, in as much as you'll be able to access these uh, screencasts and the uh, recorded live Q&A sessions um, from Astria, but you can also access them via YouTube by going to either Piela's YouTube channel or Lighton's YouTube channel. All right, so now we're going to look at the course grading or course assessment, all right? So right now, the course will be, will be split with three assignments, one test and one final exam. 
So that's three assignments, one test, and one final exam. So the CA cumulative total will have will be 60% of your final grade and the exam will be 40% of your final grade. So there'll be 30% of your CA coming from the three assignments. Right? So the distribution there will be given to you in time. Most likely it will be 10% for each assignment. And then 30% of your CA will come from your one test. All right. Okay. And again, the time frame for the test and how the test will be delivered, it will be given to you in due time way long before the test is administered. Okay. Same with the final exam. You will be told more about it all right, as we progress. Right. And no uh, so, uh, unfortunately, because of the, <clears throat> the COVID, so-called COVID-19 pandemic, I mean, so the academic kind are sort of like being distorted, which is why um, the link, the syllabus, once you download the syllabus, you notice that the last table is practically empty because we are uncertain about when certain activities are going to be conducted. Um, we don't know uh, if we're going to have like a physical residential school, for instance. Um, and so which is why we're saying for now, we're a bit uncertain as to when some of these things are going to be done. But once we are aware, we shall send through communication. Okay, and then here we just have just a brief summary of your the classification of your grades, right? So you can go into this in more detail in your own time. We will not spend too much time on this at this current time. Okay, and then we'll have to make a note of academic dishonesty. So please keep in mind every assessment that you submit, it has to be your own work, right? So if there's any form of plagiarism or copying or cheating, this will result in a zero mark as it's, it tells you here, right? It will be a zero mark for the entire continuous assessment score. Okay, so just keep in mind that when plagiarism, copying and cheating comes, is, is identified, it, it can be dealt with severely. In some cases, it can be taken even to higher authorities beyond just your instructors. Just avoid submitting copied work. Make sure all the assessment that you submit is your own. Right. I'm not sure if you want to add anything, Dr. Piri. Well, yeah, so, so the idea behind, if you look at this course, right, especially the practical components, uh, it turns out that it's, it's unlike these other courses where you're going to be writing essays and whatnot. It's very easy to, to um, identify um, work that has been copied, right? There, there are software tools that we use, actually. So you, you probably want to, if you're struggling with something, best you reach out to us and, and, and so that we can fix or we can course correct rather than um, getting to the point where you start uh, copying work that's not videos, right? So you want to avoid this. Um, it's become so much of an issue now. Uh, in the past, actually, uh, a huge chunk of the assessment for most of these IDE courses was was allocated to the assignments. But now what they're doing is they're apportioning a huge chunk of the CA2 tests, right? So assessments that you'd write when you come for residential school, precisely because of this, um, well, everything that falls under the class of academic dishonesty. So you probably want to you probably want to avoid doing this, right? And I don't, I don't expect us to do this with a third year, maybe first, second year, but not a third year. But we're just putting it out there, just to, I guess, to put it in black and white. You also find it in the syllabus, actually. Uh, it's so serious that um, you see, if if either myself or Piela are caught um, engaging in any form of academic malpractice, it's instant dismissal, right? So. That's how serious this whole thing is, right? So you probably want to take this seriously. Okay. Okay, all right. And I think it's not mentioned here, but there's also the issue of uh, missed assessments. You should always remember that you have to send a formal email to me and Dr. Piri, all right? We, and there needs to be a, a, a document, a valid document that indicates all right, all right, the reasons for the missed assessment. Okay, so as we have mentioned, most of your course material will be on Astria. So here again, 
under the cost management we will emphasize on the fact that your list that's 10 will be administered exclusively using Astria. Okay. So in terms of your learning management systems, Astria will be the exclusively used learning management system aside from our profile pages. Right. So your notes, your screencasts, your links to screencasts and your assignments, they will be on Astria. Okay. And communication will be done mainly through your course mailing list. So most of you, you should already be included in the mailing list, right? Just a bit of a correction here. If you want to send a message to the mailing list, right? Even if you're a member or not a member, you want to use the mailing list address, which is stated here, right? But again, I'm sure most of you are already in the mailing list. And if you know some, student who is not yet in the mailing list please inform us so we can add them to the mailing list i think this is already this process has already begun all right so you want to make sure your unza assigned email has been added to the list that's if you're using a unza assigned email i know some of you are using your gmail and your other email clients so that's also for your that's also fine Okay, so here's some information about your course instructors. You have your the email address for Light and Piri, and you have the email address for Pierre Lamberi. All right, please note that at this time we usually do not give out our phone numbers except to the class representative. All right, so if we need to reach out to the class urgently, we will use either email or we will go through the class representative. We will speak about the class re representative shortly. All right, so our office details are provided here. Unfortunately, you will not find us in the offices right now, all right, due to the so-called COVID-19 pandemic. You will want to reach out to us mainly through the course mailing list, all right, the one that was indicated on the previous slide. Okay, all right. Yes, and uh, I, I, yes. this, this mostly applies to actually the, we understand, I mean, the people in the house that are in Chadiz, uh, uh, you know, Kafue and whatnot. So this is, I guess this mostly applies to the people that are uh, co-located with us, like the based in Osaka. If you ever feel like you want to physically visit us and, and, and seek clarification on some aspect of the course, you are more than welcome. Um, so these office hours simply mean that um, you'll be able to find both Pierre and myself in the office during these slots that have been indicated. And as it turns out, Pierre and myself share the same office, so I, I guess that makes it a lot easier for you. So, uh, oh, unless if you want to privately see Pierre and you don't want Lighten to be around, that, that can be arranged also. Um, but in the event that you want to see either one of us uh, outside of these office hours, uh, in my case, um, there's a link to my calendar. Um, all you have to do is just identify a free slot and then just send me mail to say, I'm coming to see you light on during this slot because I notice as if, uh, I notice that you're not busy or something and then we can arrange for an interaction. All right, so as Lighton had mentioned, or Lighton P was talking about finding a slot on the calendar, all right, so his, his calendar link will be made available to you, right? And as he mentioned, if you find a free slot, then you can schedule an appointment with him. Okay. All right, so for now, I think we'll just ask for some comments or some concerns before we proceed, All right? So we'll still yeah. be talking briefly about administration of the course and then course content. So PLA. If I can just speak to the previous slide. So the previous slide has a, uh, uh, should have a link to the course calendar. Uh, there's no link, but I'll put a link there. So this calendar is different from the link that is there associated to my calendar. That's my personal calendar. You want to bookmark that course calendar because it will have details of activities, scheduled activities. So if we have a scheduled activity, let's say in two weeks time, a live interaction similar to this one, you will find those details on the course calendar. I don't know if I'm making sense here. So if, uh, if I can maybe share this link so that people uh, that I, I neglected to put the link to that calendar, I do apologize for that, but it will be in the 
syllabus and uh, I will also post it in the chat just now, right? So just take note, the calendar, uh, the, the personal calendar for Lighton is different from the course calendar which I have just tested in the link. So maybe Pierre, if you can click on both links so that they see, so click on mine first, just so we, I can showcase exactly what I mean here. If you can start with the previous one, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Right, so that, that would take you to, to my calendar. You can notice light on theory there. So the, the free slots and the busy slots I'm talking about here is in the event that you don't want to see me on Friday, everything in white space there would be a free slot where you can come and chat to me, for instance. Of course, this is specific to this week, so my schedule might be different the following week or the week after, right? And then if you click on the, the, the course calendar, you'll notice that there's only one scheduled event, which is this event, today's event. There it is up there, right? Uh, but, but, but eventually, right, there'll be more events that will be scheduled. So you want to make sure that you bookmark the course calendar so that um, you know exactly what's coming your way, uh, let's say next week or the week after. Uh, although, I mean, most of this information will be communicated to you via email if there's an event or something. But it's always nice to just bookmark the course calendar. Okay, so as mentioned, for now, we're just going to briefly ask if there are comments or concerns before we continue. This is strange. Is it, could, could it be that uh, you are so clear, Pierre, that there are no questions? Questions. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> um, that nobody has the question. No, it's not. It's not that. Okay. Then ask it. We just want to... <laughs> It's just. Uh, it was different from the. Uh, hello, Helen. Are you still there? Is it just me? I can't hear you. I don't know how we're going to be able to do it. Sorry. Could Could you repeat your statement? I'm here. Yeah, could you repeat your statement? I couldn't get. I think we. Uh, I think it was we just uh, like for me. I'm probably just puzzled with, uh, you know, being used with the class environment and then to now this. Okay, is this too much? What, yeah, like what a you, What's what's by this? What do you mean? No, it's a new thing. Like it's the first time that I'm doing this video. Ah, well, a, then we should we should thank the gods that we're doing this because we're studying what application of ICTs in information yeah. management, right? So I think this yeah, is, yeah. these are all good things. Yeah, Even though we are not covering video conferencing software, but I think it's a good thing that we are playing around with most of these tools. Then. Yeah. Uh, okay. We only hope well, it you can simplified. <laughs> it will. But, well, it turns out that like like with most things in life, eventually. Uh, it becomes much easier. So the more you do it, so things like uh, using these video conferencing pieces of software, for instance, you do this uh, two, three times, maybe four times, then it becomes it becomes like something normal, right? Uh, when you're doing it for the first time, it feels strange, but but we think this is good because, uh, especially for your case where there's no face-to-face -face interaction, I, I I don't think that the the so-called residential school, the interactions we have during residential school, is sufficient. And this is like two weeks, right? And you have so many things packed. So the idea behind this is to, to have much more than just that, um, I suppose. But if you have uh, a question, if you, have, if you think of a question, you can use the mailing list to ask and then we'll respond, right? If you don't have a question right now. Um, okay. All right. You have got a question. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, the question is the, the modules that we have currently, do we disregard them and wait for what you're going to update or maybe they are still valid? Yeah, so uh, so that's the thing. We, for now, I think the, the substantial changes that are going to be made to those things, right? And uh, tentatively right now, we, we should be done with what we're working on uh, in the week of May 18th, or at least before the end of this month, you'll have a com comprehensive um, module, right, that will have slightly more details than what's currently in those modules. And in fact, the format will also change as well. Uh, so I would say 
not not really disregard disregard them per se. You can still make reference to them uh, because it turns out that most of the factual information in the modules is actually still valid, right? But but there'll be additional information that will be added there. Uh, there's there's a lot that's going to change. Hopefully that answers your question. Wait some. Yeah, it, it does. Okay. All right. Are there any other Okay, so while you're still thinking about your next questions, I think we'll point out at this time that we need another course representative, right? right so refer to them as a course representative or a class representative. Okay, so let me know if you can still hear me, first of all. And if there's anyone who would like to volunteer, currently we have one course representative, but we'd like a second course representative if there's anyone who would like to volunteer, then you can indicate in the chat or you can indicate to our email addresses. All right, so that is that regarding the course representative. So normally what happens is we have two representatives. So we are looking for someone who will volunteer Right, so again, if you if there's anyone who'd want to volunteer to be a course representative, you can just indicate in the chat or right, the Google Hangouts, the Google Meet chat, all right, or you can send us an email. Okay, and uh, oh, before we continue, we also needed to point out if you do send an email that is directly to one of the instructors, not on the mailing list, you want to make sure you send to both of us. So if you're sending an email to Light and Piri, you also want to copy to Pierre Lambewe, or if you're sending to Pierre Lambewe, you want to copy to Light and Piri. I hope that is clear. Okay, so here we have the list that turn learning outcomes. All right, so I'm just briefly going to indicate uh, some of the learning outcomes and then Light and Piri, he's going to also take you through some of the course content. So upon completion of this course, you should be able to explain the concepts of information management systems. All right, create and use your relational and non-relational databases, All right? Create your websites and understand the code that goes into creating your websites and you should also be able to use and understand your integrated library management systems. All right, so those are the, your learning outcomes for list 3010. All right, so we are now going to start looking at uh, more information about your course modules. I believe for now, I will stop the screen share. Uh, Lighten is going to speak about the, the course modules. I'm hoping he's still connected. Well, I am. I got disconnected there. I don't know what happened. My, my microphone connection disappointed me today. I'm still connected here. So I'll share my screen once you okay. stop sharing. Okay, so, okay. Uh, can you see my screen, hopefully? Hello? Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. So I, I thought I would start off by just opening this so-called syllabus. So the document, the link I just shared, you should have access to this document. It has slightly, um, slightly, or maybe just the same information as in the slides, um, perhaps more condensed anyway, I don't know. Uh, so you probably want to download that thing. Uh, the slides will also be shared. Right? Great, so Pierre has already mentioned the, the, the key learning outcomes here. Right? Uh, by the time we're done with this course, we should all be able to work towards these broad learning outcomes here, right? Uh, everybody in the course will be able to create a very simple website or design, create and design a website, um, be able to use these so-called integrated library management systems, right? Um, and then you should be able to 
give a rundown of what these things we are calling information management systems are all about. And, and of course, be able to create some relational and relational database management system. Um, I should mention here that Pierre and myself have been chatting in the sidelines to incorporate so-called NoSQL databases. Uh, so that would be good alongside the relational database management systems that we'll discuss. So in terms of the modules, right? Um, the entire course is centered around six core modules or themes, whatever I want to call them. Module one is just uh, probably the shortest of them all, information management systems. Um, and then we need to transition to database technologies. I don't know if this should be database technologies or database management systems. Um, and then there's an in-depth discussion of structured query language or so-called SQL. Uh, the idea behind this, by the way, is that um, the vast majority of database management systems that are used uh, in the real world are actually relational database management systems. With, with the exception of uh, these large scale applications like Facebook, for instance, right? Uh, which operate at, at relatively large scale, they'll typically use NoSQL database management systems. So what I'm trying to say here is the reason why we have module three and four, where we specifically focus on structured query language and uh, a particular case of the relational database management system, in this case, MySQL, is simply because your average database management system that is used is relational, right? And you understand all of these once we, uh, we, we look at the theory behind databases in module two. Um, and then web design, which perhaps is the longest of the modules we have here, just because there's a lot here, right? There's XML that's going to be introduced to you. Um, HTML, both of which are markup languages. Um, and then you, you go into a lengthy discussion of so-called cascading style sheet, right? So it's language that you use to style your website. Um, and, and then I think at some stage, Piela will probably introduce you to this whole notion of uh, server-side scripting. Right, so uh, how do you ensure that this website that you create is dynamic in nature? And then finally, we wrap up the course with library automation, which for the most part is centered around um, case study applications that you find in the real world. So the likes of Open Biblio, uh, Viewfind, and uh, so-called Koha or something, right? Uh, I'll just pause here to check if people are still with me. I, I got disconnected here. Are we still, am I still online? Yes, you are. Thank you very much. Great. So, uh, what you want, uh, really, we're just going to focus on trying to gain an in-depth understanding of what information management systems are. Uh, and really, the, the focus here is going to be on the, the different types of information management systems. Um, as we're explaining the concepts, we'll do a revision of something that perhaps you, you're already bored about. So, looking at the fundamental difference between data and information. So, how we 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 transition from data going to information and then finally deriving knowledge, knowledge from the information, right? So these are the things we're going to look at. Um, and then we immediately transition into the database management system module or database technologies module, right? Where we start off by looking at the theory behind these things we're calling database management systems. And then we'll look at the history. So it's usually the case that you touch on the history because you want to set the stage for why these database technologies are important, the advantages associated with database technologies. And as it turns out, when we're discussing the history, uh, or when we discuss the history, we'll mostly tie our discussion to so-called file systems, right? Because before databases came on the scene, um, information or data was mostly stored on flat files, right? So we'll mostly discuss that. Um, and then we will have an in-depth discussion on uh, database design approaches. Our focus here will be on so-called entity relationship models, right? So we'll gain a sense of how to design something akin to what you're seeing on the right-hand side here, right? It's, although this is a high-level view of an ER diagram. So look at how we go about designing an ER diagram. And the reason we want to understand or learn how to design an ER diagram is before you can actually create a database, you need to design it. Just like you need to design a website before you can create it anyway, right? Uh, so the planning part involves creating diagrams similar to what you're seeing on the right-hand side here. Very soon you, you understand all of this, don't worry, it will make sense. And then we'll focus on so-called structured query language, right? Just the theory here and, and uh, really the focus is going to be on two key things. 
the syntax associated with SQL, it's a language, and so it has a corresponding syntax associated with it, right? Uh, I hope I have uh, I'll be a good time to, probably not a, a good time to, I wanted to showcase an example here. Uh, anyway, it's fine. Um, so we'll learn exactly how to write uh, SQL statements or SQL statements, right? But before we can actually learn how to write those statements, we want to study the syntax. So what sort of uh, notations do we use to write these things we are calling SQL? Once we learn the syntax, we'll, we'll look at two categories of SQL statements. So so-called DDL or data definition language and DML, which is data manipulation language, right? So your DDL will, will typically allow you to create structures within your database management system. In this case, the relational database management system. And then your DML statements will allow you to manipulate data or access data within the database. And as it turns out, really a database, this thing we're calling a database is nothing more than a file. It's a file similar to that .docx or .doc document that you work with when you're using Microsoft Word, right? Uh, so exciting things here. Um, uh, in my previous life, I was a database administrator, so I, I get really excited when I'm talking about this. Uh, I, I wrote a lot of SQL statements. In fact, I, I was paid to write SQL statements, actually. Sounds funny, but I, I did that for almost four years. Right? Um, and then in module number four, we look at a specific type of relational database management system. So our case is going to be MySQL. Now, there's a broad spectrum of relational database management systems, right? I dare you to just uh, go online and just say, uh, list of RDB MSs, right? And go on Wikipedia and you notice things like SQL to come up, MySQL, Postgres, Postgres will come up, right? Um, so what I'm trying to say here is even though our case is going to, and access by the way can be added to the list, even though our discussion is going to be centered around MySQL, uh, but we want to keep at the back of our minds or heads that uh, there's a broad spectrum of relational database management systems out there. You notice the list on Wikipedia here is this, right? So MySQL should be there, there it is. But there's Microsoft SQL Server, there's Oracle, there's uh, SQL Elite. Uh, some of these things I haven't even used myself, right? Uh, so exciting stuff that we're going to cover them in module number four. Uh, uh, probably one of our longest modules as well, just because what we are doing in four years, trying to put into practice the things that will be introduced to us in module three, right? So we'll be writing actual S SQL statements here. Not just writing actual SQL statements, but we'll learn how to install this particular relational database management system, how we get to connect to it, both using uh, graphical user interface applications like PHP MyAdmin, which is why it's on the list of software tools, by the way, or using the command line. Right, so exciting things out. Maybe now would be, it. I'm keen to showcase what we are going to be doing so that people have an idea, right? Uh, and I hope people are still there. Uh, I, I hope this works. I always like showing demos here so that people have a sense of what we are working towards. I was trying to do this demo on my local machine, but I can't because I think I don't have my SQL installed. But what I will do is I will try and see if I can connect here. Please connect, no. Uh, okay, it doesn't want to, doesn't want us to log in here, which is quite sad anyway, uh, unfortunate. But anyway, so what I was doing here, showcasing how you'd connect on the command line, for instance, right? So we'll learn how to do these things. Uh, I only wish it were, I wish it was possible for me to do this, but I, I'm wondering why, right? I'm keen to, to, I guess I should have, I should have uh, tried out this demo before. Uh, nothing, okay, well, that's fine. All right, that's fine. Anyway, so we'll learn how to do all those things, you know, how to connect to MySQL using the terminal and using GUI applications like phpMyAdmin, and again, the ton of graphical user interface applications out there, but we're using phpMyAdmin because it happens to be one of the easiest to use. And then we get to start practicing the DDO statements that would have been introduced in module three, 
right? Data definition language is to data definition language to create tables, to create columns and and other structures within that particular database to create users, right? Um, and then we'll play around with DML statements to be able to select or to query data from the database, to add data to the database, to update information or data that's already existing in the database, to delete information from the database, right? Um, and then finally, we transition to module number five where we, we really have a lengthy chat or discussion on how we go about creating so-called websites, not just simplistic websites like uh, the site that Kiela was showing us, uh, uh, our static sites, right? If you look at Lighton's uh, web profile, for instance, it's it's a static it's a static website, right? And by static here, uh, we mean that there's there's very little interactivity here aside from just downloading stuff from there. So if if, if this thing can just open, it looks like all the things are fading here. So this is a static website, but we're going to do much more, right? We want to get to a stage where we can design something that looks similar like this uh, site here, right? Visually appealing, why is it visually appealing? And I know it's not the best looking site, but it's visually appealing because, uh, I mean, the text is formatted differently. Uh, in certain instances, you have maps and whatnot, dynamic information. So we want to get to a stage where we're able to do these things even better. We want to be able to be able to design things like what you see on the UNSA website, yeah? Yeah, these banners here that are, that are scrolling here or something. And all that is possible because of a component that's tagged as cascading style sheet or CSS, which is why it's there. Uh, and then we have just a gentle introduction to XML, right? And even though the, this whole notion of server-side scripting is not a part of our discussion, but <clears throat> we will nonetheless introduce it uh, so that we gain an appreciation for what's going to be discussed in module six, right? Because the tools that we, we are going to look at in module six, the core house of this world, Open Biblio and Viewfind, uh, fundamentally they are content management system, right? Um, they work with dynamic information or dynamic data, right? So we want to get to a stage where at least we have an appreciation of that, of how that dynamic data gets to be created, all right? So, Finally, we wrap up with module six, where we fundamentally look at library automation, although really our focus is going to be on the freely available or open source uh, li integrated library management systems or library automation systems. Um, our case is going to focus on core and open biblio, and if time allows, we shall look at viewfind, right? We want to be able to get to a stage where if you happen to find yourself working in an environment where you're told to automate some aspect of, uh, let's say, records management, for instance, or uh, integrating the different library management systems, we want you to be able to do this using freely available tools that are open source. All right, so what we've decided to do is to break up the module responsibilities as follows. So Lighton will handle module one, two, and three, and six, and then Piela will be responsible for four and five. But what's going to happen is uh, in as much as we are responsible for these modules, uh, you might find Piela coming to module two just to cover some unit within there. And Lighton will probably come into module five and maybe module four to come and cover some aspect of those modules as well. Um, so that was just a quick rundown of the six modules that we're going to cover, right? Uh, a lot of work ahead of us, but, but in my opinion, I think it's a lot of exciting things happening uh, for some of you, perhaps most of you, it will be learning completely new skills, um, skills which I think are probably going to be useful at some stage in your career. Uh, these days, irrespective of what sort of role you find yourself in, you probably will find yourself working with data, right? So it turns out that learning SQL becomes a very valuable skill here, right? So looking at the time here, um, I don't know if there are any questions uh, with regards to just this sneak preview of module one all the way up to module six. I don't know if people are still there or if it's all quiet on the Western front here. We're here. Thank God you're there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> are, there <laughs> are there questions?
So there's a question from Yvonne, right? And I wonder why she's using the church saying, uh, are we going to learn all these topics listed during residential school, during online classes? Listen, in residential school, right, it's, it's two weeks. Within those two weeks, you're writing tests. Um, some of these things are going to be introduced to you uh, during sessions such as this one, right? Um, uh, and generally, it's generally the case that during residential school, the focus is on more involving modules, right? Modules where most of the, um, I, I guess most of the students would need clarity on, and it's usually the practical oriented modules. So the answer to Yvonne's question is a bit of uh, both online and, uh, and during residential school. I hope that answers your question, Yvonne. And then, uh, 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 clearly, Fredizo is not his name, but it says, Fredizo Academy says, does it mean we need to study all the six modules in readiness for the exam? Oh, well, yes. The exam, you notice from the syllabus, says the exam is based on everything covered. And this course involves uh, module one all the way up to six. So the exam is going to cover one through six. Yeah. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Fredizo Academy. Are there any other questions? I hope the material will be available on time. Yes, 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 yes. Well, of <laughs> course. So when we when we are saying uh, when we are saying the modules will be ready before end of the month, that that is like the revised, the completely revised modules will be ready by end of the month. But as we are covering these 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 modules, right? What we will be doing is we'll be sharing the screencasts alongside the presentation slides. Right, so each, each module will have presentation slides similar to this, and for the practical oriented ones, there'll be a screencast to help you understand the modules. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other questions? All right, uh, it doesn't look like there are questions here. Um, Piela, any closing remarks? Uh, we, we might as well shut this down now that it's, it's already 18 here. We had scheduled this to, uh, to, to just last for an hour. I'm sorry to cut to before you end it. Yes. There's another cosmic who is trying to to log in using the phone, to join using okay. the phone. But okay. he's, find, he's finding problems. Uh, I don't know if he, he's talking of, it's bringing a Play Store. Does he have to? Yes, so you need to install, yes. If you're using a phone, like uh, I see Branson is using a phone there, you need to install an application called Google Meet. Mm -hmm. So when the Play Store page comes up, he should just install, click install, and then hopefully when we have this uh, other session, which is after next week, uh, he should be able to, he should be able to uh, join us. So yes, he should do that, he should install the application. Hello. Yes, hi. Hi. It's, it's just a contribution. I, I, I really don't even know how to explain this. It, it, oh, seems, try it, it seems really confusing. I hope we'll catch up. It has really confused oh. me. Just from the first day, I feel confused already. I'm not getting anything, really. <laughs> I, I, I apologize if you're confused. I, I don't know if uh, now, when people are confused, maybe it's the presenters, right? So we apologize no. up front if we were confusing. But uh, usually the, the starting is always a bit hazy and confusing. Uh, which which part was confusing though? Uh, the, 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 okay, I'm 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 not good with the ICTs. Maybe uh, like the, the the entire thing. I'm yet to understand the concept. That's why I'm getting confused a bit. Anyway, well, maybe as we well, go, well, I'll get the clarity and I'll get to know what uh, you're talking about. Yes, I, I yes, feel I like I'm 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 really behind, but I'll 
I'm right. sure I'll be there. Yeah, I, th I think you will because you see this course is tagged as, as what? It's tagged as a application of uh, application of ICTs in information management. So for, I mean, really that when we look at that first module, I think more some aspects of what we're doing should begin to make sense. Um, uh, yeah, it will, I think. I have hope, actually. Hoping for the it best. Will, <laughs> yeah, it will make sense. I, I think that's, right. that's, why, that's why Pierre and myself, uh, I th that's part of the reason why we are here, actually, so that we help you understand what we're going to discuss, right? So, and it's, it's one of the reasons why we also have residential schools, so that if, if, if there are things that still don't make sense as we're interacting online, when the time comes for us to come for residential school, we get to focus on those problematic aspects of the course. So, so I, think, I think there's enough time for us to understand, really. We should be able to understand. Hopefully, we'll try. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. And here saying when when exactly are we going to have the next meeting? Um, and this is Brian. So so the thing is, um, tentatively it's after next week. Uh, and both Kiel and myself think that we, we we would like to think that the vast majority of you wake, right? You're probably waking. That's the assumption we are making. And so we we were we've been trying to figure out which slot is going to work best for us and for you. And we thought uh, Saturday evening would be okay. Right. So tentatively for now, we we'll work with uh, after next week, Saturday at 17, we'll have another session. But of course, we will send out information about this well in advance to say we've scheduled a meeting. Right. If you have concerns about the timing, it's one of the reasons why we have uh, Shayla. Right. And, and hopefully the other uh, class rep whom you are going to, to elect. The idea behind having at least two class reps is in the event that Sheila is not available, she just told us that she was driving, I think. So imagine she was not available, uh, or maybe she's traveling and she's not around. You want the other person to be able to, to I guess, reach out to us on your behalf, right? So, uh, so the next session to answer your question is tentatively going to be held after next week on Saturday. And by then, hopefully you'd have had the chance to go through the first module, right? <clears throat> the first module is a short module, really. Um, so the idea here is for us to have just a brief discussion about that module in case you want um, us to clarify some aspects of that particular module. So I hope that answers your question, Brian. Okay. So Simon says, are we going to have practical exam or is just theory? So the, the way the course is structured is the exam is purely theory, right? Uh, well, semi-theory, I suppose, because in certain instances, some questions will have some practical components to them, right? Uh, so they, there's nothing like a practical, a practical exam, nothing like a practical test, right? The test and the exam are theory. The assignments are going to be practical in nature, right? Uh, all right, and then Josephine says, uh, okay, exactly same question as Simon. All right. Uh, I don't know if there are any other questions. I'm wondering why people are, are asking in the chat instead of speaking through the microphone. But anyway, um, <clears throat> if there are no questions, <clears throat> then maybe we can, we can uh, part ways. And uh, in closing, I will just say, I'm really looking forward to working with you. Uh, this is a really, really interesting course, in my opinion. And my understanding is that the vast majority of you probably are pursuing careers that have something to do with aspects of what we're going to discuss. So hopefully by the time we're done with this, you'll be able to put to practice the concepts that we're going to discuss. Um, it's a really exciting journey. Um, I did this when I was a student. I've taught this, I've, I've practiced most of the things that we're going to discuss. So I, I know it's interesting and it's useful. Pierre, I don't know if you have anything to say before we close. And I don't know if Pierre is still around here. I don't know. I'll just check. Ooh. It looks like Piela got disconnected and I was, oh, he's still around. Piela, I don't know if no, you can hear. Sorry, unfortunately, unfortunately oh. my mic was just off. Okay. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to mention that as we, as we proceed with the modules, right, so the content will become more clear as we go along. So, so 
um, I, I suppose mostly for the students who are concerned about the database concepts, it will become more clear as we begin looking at the concepts one by one. So that's all I wanted to add for now. Right. And, and if it, at, at some stage, some things become too, too much and you don't want us to have these live sessions, hey, you can just tell us, right? <laughs> um, uh, you can either reach out to the class rep, you discuss as a group, and then let us know. And then if you want more interactivity, um, then you reach out to us. And I, I guess most of this is going to be work in progress. And hopefully by the time we get uh, to an advanced stage, we'll have come up with a formula that works for us and uh, a formula that also works for you as well. Uh, all right, so we, uh, we are going to disconnect here. Uh, but by the way, this meeting, the way it's scheduled is you can continue the interaction as a group uh, once we are gone. It's a nice way of, uh, uh, I guess, uh, getting to know yourselves a lot better, right? Um, so when we leave, you're free to interact and maybe maybe try and discuss some aspects of what we just spoke about, maybe concerns or complaints that you might have uh, in the event that there's, there's no other platform that you, you probably have as a group or something. This is quite nice in my opinion anyway. Uh, but also just remind you that this particular thing is going to be recorded up to the last, the time when the last person leaves the room. Once that happens, uh, the link will be shared via the mailing list and also via Astria as well. So you'll have access to the recording in the event that you want to play back some section of what we've discussed. Uh, all right, so I'm logging out. Thank you so much. Uh, it was really nice meeting you and we'll see you uh, after next week on Saturday. Bye. Bye, thank right. you. Good evening.